So it appears to me that authorities just completely ignore the stress response. They put pressure on you to perform in a way that they want you to perform without taking into consideration your needs. And if you communicate to them that more pressure triggers more stress, they just dismiss it. This is a random search for stress response. Understanding the stress response. Chronic activation of the survival mechanism impairs health. So already here you see when authorities to stress you out with their insane ways of putting pressure on you, causing a stress response. But their aim is that you do everything to improve your health. It's an oxymoron. <laughs> oh, this is so beyond stupid what they do anyway i find it very important to be educated on the stress response so you can at least communicate that to them and educate them about it repeatedly until it sinks in a stressful situation, whether something environmental such as a looming work deadline or psychological, such as persistent worry about losing a job, can trigger a cascade of stress hormones that produce well-orchestrated physiological changes. A stressful incident can make the heart pound and breathing quicken. Muscles tense and beads of sweat may appear. This combination of reactions to stress is also known as the fight or flight response because it evolved as a survival mechanism, enabling people and other mammals to react quickly to life threatening situations. The carefully orchestrated yet near instantaneous sequence of hormonal changes and physiological responses helps someone to fight the threat of or flee to safety. Unfortunately, the body can also overreact to stressors that are not life-threatening, such as traffic jams, work pressure, and family difficulties. Now for autistics it's a bit different. We get stressed by other things that may not cause a stress response in a neurotypical and then they go on and invalidate our reaction. But a stress response is not cognitive. It happens. Your nervous system reacts to the stressor when perceived as a threat. So, therefore, one should identify the stressor and avoid it not being pushed into it. Over the years, researchers have learned not only how and why these reactions occur, but have also gained insight into the long-term effects chronic stress has on physical and psychological health. There you have it. That's the exact problem of invalidation trauma when disregarded when people don't believe you don't take you seriously dismiss it even gaslight you what do you think does that to your nervous system it causes additional stress 
over time, a repeated activation of the stress response takes a toll on the body. Research suggests that chronic stress contributes to high blood pressure, promotes the formation of artery clogging deposits and causes brain changes that may contribute to anxiety, depression and addiction. There you have it. That's the exact thing so many autistics struggle with. More preliminary research suggests that chronic stress may also contribute to obesity both through direct mechanisms causing people to eat more or indirectly decreasing sleep and exercise. Yeah, if you are stressed, you don't sleep so well, obviously. Sounding the alarm. The stress response begins in the brain when someone confronts an oncoming car or other danger. The eyes or ears or both send the information to the amygdala, an area of the brain that contributes to emotional processing. The amygdala interprets the images and sounds. When it perceives danger, it instantly sends a distress signal to the hypothalamus. Um, I think also smells scents can trigger an alarm response someone experiences a stressful event the amygdala an area of the brain that contributes to emotional processing sends a distress signal to the hypothalamus this area of the brain functions like a command center communicating with the rest of the body through the nervous system so that the person has the energy to fight or flee and it's important to note that in some people the amygdala is more sensitive and reacts very quickly to any stressor more so than in other people especially when you've had a history of trauma the autonomic nervous system has two components the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system the sympathetic nervous system functions like a gas pedal in a car it triggers the fight or flight response but also the freeze they always forget that providing the body with a burst of energy so that it can respond to perceived dangers the parasympathetic nervous system acts like a break it promotes the rest and digest response that calms the body down after the danger has passed so you see the freeze response it's not a parasympathetic state because in the freeze response you still feel very anxious inside but you just shut down you play dead in order to survive you are still in a survival mode but they always forget to mention that anyway after the amygdala sends a distress signal, the hypothalamus activates the sympathetic nervous system by sending signals through the autonomic nerves to the adrenal glands. These glands respond by pumping the hormone epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, into the bloodstream. As epinephrine circulates, through the body it brings on a number of physiological changes the heart beats faster than normal pushing blood to the muscles heart and other vital organs pulse rate and blood pressure go up the person 
undergoing these changes also starts to breathe more rapidly. So I noticed that immediately when I am stressed, my heart beats very fast, even though I'm still sitting there, not doing anything. But I noticed a fast heartbeat and also I can start trembling. Small airways in the lungs open wide. This way the lungs can take in as much oxygen as possible with each breath. Extra oxygen is sent to the brain increasing alertness. Sight, hearing and other senses become sharper. Meanwhile, epinephrine triggers the release of blood sugar glucose and fats from temporary storage sites in the body. These nutrients flood into the bloodstream supplying energy to all parts of the body. All of these changes happen so quickly that people aren't aware of them. In fact, the wiring is so efficient that the amygdala and hypothalamus start this cascade, even before the brain's visual centers have had a chance to fully process what is happening. That's why people are able to jump out of the path of an oncoming car even before they think about what they are doing. As the initial surge of epinephrine subsides, the hypothalamus activates the second component of the stress response system, known as the HBA axis. This network consists of the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland and the adrenal glands. The HBA axis relies on a series of hormonal signals to keep the sympathetic nervous system, the gas pedal, pressed down. If the brain continues to perceive something as dangerous, the hypothalamus releases corticotrophin-releasing hormone, which travels to the pituitary gland triggering the release of adrenocorticotropic hormone. This hormone travels to the adrenal glands, promoting them to release cortisol. The body thus stays revved up and on high alert. When the threat passes, cortisol levels fall. The parasympathetic nervous system, the break, then dampens the stress response. Many people are unable to find a way to put the brakes on stress. Yeah, of course, if there is a constant threat, then you cannot calm down. Chronic low-level stress keeps the HPA axis activated, much like a motor that is idling too high for too long. After a while, this has an effect on the body that contributes to the health problems associated with chronic stress. It is important to validate this stress response. And there shouldn't be any aim to just manipulate the person to perform in a way that will trigger a stress response. 